So um, I'm going to show you today how to set up um, admin SSO from um, Azure AD um, into the um, Zscaler administration portal. I'm going to show you Zscaler Internet Access um, admin SSO, but the, the same is also true for Zscaler Private Access admin SSO. Um, and the use case I'm going to show you here is how to invite guest users um, into your Azure AD tenant and then federate them across um, to um, the Zscaler admin portals. Um, use cases for this, um, um, third parties, um, you know, contractors that you might want to invite um, and not add to your Azure AD. Um, could also be your, your managed service provider partner um, who needs to um, have their own tenant uh, of Azure AD and you federate them into your tenant um, to then sign them into your Zscaler uh, administration portal. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll run you through this, um, uh, the, the setup, and then we'll do a demo. So uh, I'm going to sign in. Um, I'm using the beta cloud today, um, so it might be a little slower than the, the production cloud. Um, let's just uh, let that sign in a second. Um, and whilst that's signing in, I will come over to, to uh, my Azure portal. So I've got my um, admin SSO configuration here. Um, We've, uh, we're set up for single sign-on, um, and uh, here you'll see you know, the entity ID is my admin SSO .do. Um, um, The ACS URL is admin SSO .do, and we're going to return a bunch of uh, um, uh, user identifiers, um, and we've got some conditions in here to differentiate our two sets of users. So hopefully that's signed in. Um, We'll come across over here and we'll go to administrator management. Um, and so I'm set up for SAML authentication. Um, it's my Welsh, the, the, the beta um, tenant. Um, and that's all uh, set up and configured already. Um, we can look at the metadata, but effectively it, it federates across there. And the main point with um, admin SSO is once you've set up the federation, we've got um, request, uh, we, we've got the certificates, so it's trusted for the validation. We're going to do IDP initiated SSO from um, Azure across to Zscaler, um, and we're going to trust that it's signed um, properly. Um, so if we have a look in here, oh, and, the, and the main thing is that the name ID needs to match an administrator account name. So if I look up here at my administrators, I've got my, my root account, I've got my mryan at welshgeek.net account, uh, which is enabled for SAML, and I need to edit this one. And this is the one um, that I'm going to um, federate across. And you'll notice in this, use, in this example here, the user is uh, mark.a.ryan underscore btinternet.com at welshgeek.net and it's got that format because this is how um, Azure AD will treat guest users it actually creates them um, with a with a, a transformation of their email address um, and then appends your domain um, and there's there's some interesting things that go along with that um, I've actually set this up for a login type uh, uh, password as well and we don't want that because um, it doesn't actually have a password, so we'll turn that off and click save. Um, and click activate. So, so the, from a from the Zscaler portal um, uh, perspective, I only need to create a user which which matches um, this format. So, whatever the the third party you're you're going to federate in. In my case, my username, my email address is mark.a.ryan at btinternet.com. Uh, create a user that matches um, that format and then at your domain name and you, the, 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 the domain suffix here is obviously the domain suffix for your account. Once all that's set up everything else um, is done within um, the uh, as your tenant so normally you would just return um, the name ID being your user principal name so if I come over to um, my Active Directory. Um, and let's just uh, search for users. Um, we'll go Mark. We'll just do Mark because that should be enough. Um, you know, I've got my M Ryan at WelshGeek.net, um, and this is the the guest user. So at one point, I I sent a, an invite across, um, and 
I got an invite through on my email and it says, okay, um, my, uh, my organization domain needs to send a, an invite across and I needed to accept it. And it basically, as a user, I federated in with my mark.a.ryan at btinternet.com email address. Um, and you'll see here that it got created as mark.a.ryan underscore btinternet.com hash ext hash at uh, dewal.onmicrosoft.com. So that's the that's the top level domain for my organization on Azure AD. Obviously, I've, well not obviously, uh, I've also got some subdomains, welshgeek.net being one of them. So I've got to do a couple of things to transform this user principal name into the format that needs to um, uh, be accepted by Zscaler. And, and one thing to pay attention to is Zscaler doesn't like the hash ext hash because this is in uh, uppercase and uh, Zscaler only uh, wants it in, in lowercase because email addresses should usually just be in lowercase. So um, we, we could do a couple of things, but I'll, I'll show you how that works. So um, let's just go across to our uh, enterprise applications. And the one I was looking for was called Zscaler. Uh, and I think it was actually called admin. Uh, there we go. Um, so it's all set up. It's already federating across. So I changed, I go to single sign on. And rather than sending the, U, yeah, the UPN, I'm going to change this to multiple conditions. And what I actually want to send across First off, for anybody that's a, 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 just a member of the domain, I still just want to send across user principal name. You know, that is the UPN that matches them. So, so anybody in my domain, um, um, as a as a WelshGeek.net user, will just federate across. But anybody that's the external guest, I want to do a couple of things. Now, obviously, I still want to put them in the right group to allow them access to the application. But once they're allowed access. Um, I need to do a couple of transformations. So the transformation says um, before matching the um, I want to search the the user dot local user principal name. So so what does Z scale, uh, what does Azure AD know the user as? So what is the user principal name in Azure AD? And that's specifically held under the local user principal name attribute. And what I want to do I can only do one transformation. So I need to remove everything before the hash ext hash. Um, and you'll see here, if local user user.local principal name contains hash ext hash, then return the substring before before matching, before the hash ext match, then apply the next transformation. So the next transformation is to do a join and add on the verified domain. So my domain suffix welshgeek.net. Uh, and I can do some other things if I want to, but I, I'm not really bothered by that. So, um, so my email address mark.a.ryan underscore um, underscore btinternet.com hash ext hash at uh, dewal.onmicrosoft.com because of this will get transformed to mark.a.ryan underscore btinternet.com at welshgeek.net. So once that happens it should all just work. So let's jump across to uh, my Safari browser and I'm going to myapps.microsoft.com. It's going to ask me to log in and I'm going to log in with my mark.a.ryan at btinternet.com. It's going to prompt me for my password. Let's sign in. That's interesting. A couple of redirects going on. I'm not sure what's going on there. Huh. Interesting. Well, for some reason it seems to be um, redirecting me around all over the place and uh, it seems to think I'm federated somewhere else, but I don't need to worry about that too much because I can just come straight across here 
I think that's just a way that uh, I've got some cookies cached somewhere or other. But here is the URL, the user access URL. So I can copy that to the clipboard and I can paste that straight in here. Um, we know here that it's actually going to the ZIA Welsh Geek Admin, Welsh Geek ZIA Beta application and there's the, the GUID for it and my tenant ID. So I'm going to be very specific that I want to sign in. Um, it's going to redirect me and it's um, sending me to admin Welsh Geek, uh, admin .zscaler beta .net, um and that SAML assertion is, is being sent through. Once that signs me in, Give it a second because it is the beta cloud. We are going through our release cycle at the moment, so the uh, um, the beta cloud is is a little bit slower than it normally is um, or more specifically the administration interface part of the central authority is a little bit slower um, but that's uh, that's going through um, one thing that might be uh, of interest what we'll do here we'll come across and we're going to open up a private browser session um, and we'll sign into that same page um, and I'll open up an inspection uh, window here so you can see this mark.a.ryan at btinternet.com will prompt me to log in it'll go through those redirects uh, once it's done the authentication um, and it'll send me across to um, admin.zscaler beta and we can see it here there you go, that page is loading. Um, here's the admin SSO.do. Um, whilst that's loading up, I'll just show you. Um, here is the SAML response data. So you can always take that SAML response data. Whilst that's loading, we'll just open up a, a, a terminal window. And we can echo that SAML response data. Uh, bias D. And we can search that and uh, we'll be able to see there we go there's the name ID that came across mark.a.ryan underscore btinternet.com uh, at welshgeek.net and if I come in here we can see the um, user credential here that's what it matches uh, here at the top as well so you know what this means I can go ahead I can invite third parties they don't even need to have an account on my cloud it can just be a, a live account or, a, or, or, or an account within their own domain federate that across to my Azure AD tenant I can then assign those users to the Zscaler administration application and then have them launch it either by their their app portal their myapps.microsoft.com and it'll be an icon in there or just give them the URL and they can they can run straight to that and be federated across. You get single sign-on, you get um, the role-based administration control, and it means that you don't need to be creating admin accounts here, and therefore the password policy can be controlled and everything like that. So I hope that was useful. Um, any questions, email me, mark at zscaler.com.